Hello again, pre-calculus students. In our last lesson, we learned about um, parabolas. This lesson, we're going to learn about ellipses. So let's get straight to the uh, screen sharing. And uh, as somebody would say, let's get this party started. <coughs> so all conics can be written, all four of them, that's circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas, can be written like this. You can have an x squared term, a y squared term, an x term, a y term, and a constant. You can have this uh, x, y term. Nobody likes the x, y term. And the reason we don't like it is because it causes our um, curve to rotate. So you don't have to have a parabola that just opens up, down, or left, right. You can have one that opens up and to the right at a 40 degree angle. Um, for our purposes, that's yucky. So we are not gonna have B, X, Y terms in, um, in our work. In the past, though, I thought it would be fun to take a, an ordinary ellipse and rotate it 45 degrees. And <coughs> there's a way to do that. It, it's very interesting, but it's not what we're going to do today. So here, I'll bring that down. I can't tell exactly where my picture is in this video. I've taken out the B, X, Y term. So this is kind of going to be what's called general form of a conic section. Again, we still have the X squared, the X, the Y squared, the Y terms, and a constant. We just don't have that uh, B, X, Y term. If you have a parabola, either A equals zero or C equals zero, but not both, if both of them equal zero, these two terms go away. And what do you have the graph of? Well, you have an x to the first and a y to the first. You could solve that. Uh, that's going to be the graph of a line, which is not a conic section. <clears throat> well, actually, it's a degenerate parabola, but a degenerate parabola is not a conic. If um, a equals zero, you've seen this equation now, I'm gonna pull this up a bit, get it more centered. If a equals zero, you have that graph. You have an x to the first and a y to the second. That's gonna give you a parabola. What direction will that parabola open? Will it open up or down or left or right? <coughs> and how do you know? Well, that's, if you think of that, the simplest graph of that type would be x equals y squared. And so that's going to be a graph, um, x equals y squared would open to the right, and depending on what the signs are of c, d, e, and f, that could open to the left. So if a equals zero, you have a parabola that opens to the left. If c equals zero, that's a y equals x squared parabola. That one's going to open up or down. So either A or C have to equal zero, but not both. <coughs> For an ellipse, A times C um, has to be positive. They can both be positive, or they can both be negative, but um, they have to have the same sign. Also, A and C cannot equal each other. If A and C equal each other, what conic would we have if the graph turns out to be a conic at all and not a degenerate? If A and C are equal to each other, what would we have? We'd have a circle. So A and C, um, <coughs> A and C multiplied equals zero, but they're not both zero. We have a parabola. And if A and C are the same sign, 
in other words, their product is positive, we might have an ellipse. So let's talk about ellipses. I don't really have the supplies here at home to do this picture, so or to do this for real, so I have to draw a picture. Take two focal points, those are two fixed points, and tie a string between them that's longer than that distance, um, you know, significantly longer there. And now you take your pencil and you tighten out that string until it's as taut as it can be. And then you bring your pencil over here, pulling it as taut as it could be, and you stop when you reach this line between the two focal points. Otherwise, you're just wrapping around this one. And then you come back over here and you do it this way. Then you put your pencil on the other side of the string and you bring it down. Anyway, what you're going to get is an ellipse. And what we're saying here is that the, at every point, <coughs> At every point um, along this ellipse, the distance to this, whoop, sorry about that. The distance to this point, which we'll call D1, plus this distance, D2, is going to be a constant. It's going to be the length of the string. You come down here, the distance to this point plus the distance to this point is going to be the length of the string. It's going to be a constant. So we call this constant the sum of the focal radii. Sum, because you're adding. Um, focal, because we're measuring distances to and from these two focal points. And radii, just the distance. So this distance plus this distance is going to be a constant. And again, that constant is called the sum of the focal radii. And we'll learn a little bit more about that in a moment. <laughs> we learned in the... Um, parabola lesson how to generate the conics. And an ellipse, we know that if you take a cone and you slice it at an angle, you're going to get an ellipse. That is the geometric way of getting an ellipse. The algebraic way <coughs> is this. If you have a, an ellipse oriented left, right, in other words, the major, the longer axis is horizontal then the equation of your graph is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one, where a is always, always, always in an ellipse, the distance from the center to the further vertex. That's always a. That'll be different in a hyperbola, but for now, a will always be the bigger number of a and b. <clears throat> And then B is the distance from the center to the um, smaller vertex. Sometimes we call A, we call this entire axis here the major axis. We call A the length of the semi-major axis, half of the whole thing. So again, it's the distance from the center to the vertex. And B would be the center, or I'm sorry, the semi-minor axis, the length of the semi-minor axis. If your parabola is oriented vertically, then a squared is going to be under y squared. So wherever the, whichever number, let's, let me rephrase this. Whichever of these two variables, the bigger number is under, that tells you how it's oriented. If the bigger number is under a squared, it's oriented along the x-axis, or at least parallel to the x-axis. And if a squared is under y squared, it's going to be oriented parallel to the um, vertical axis. Some points to know. Oh, and I do expect that you should know those uh, formulas for the, uh, those were called the standard form of an ellipse. The focal points will always, always, always be on the major axis. And we can prove this. <clears throat> the formula for finding the focal length is a squared minus b squared equals c squared, where c is the distance from the center to um, each of the focal points. Now, focus is a Latin word. And in Latin, its plural is foci. 
I hate that word. It just sounds stupid. Um, focuses, eh, not sure about that. So I just call them focal points. Focal points, foci, focuses, they're all the same thing. <clears throat> so the way you can remember the equation of an ellipse and the equation of its focal length, one of these two is the equation of the, of the ellipse. This is the equation for the focal length. You'll notice that in this pair, whether it be these two equations or these two equations, you know, given whatever your ellipse is, there's only one minus sign. It'll turn out in a hyperbola, there will also be a minus sign. The minus signs will be up here and the plus will be down here. But for an ellipse, it's going to be a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So this whole number minus this whole number is going to equal c squared. Take the square root of that and you have the focal length. <clears throat> well, I told you something about that um, uh, sum of the focal radii, d1 plus d2. If you remember, we took our string and we put our pencil in and we stretched it out and that's how we got our ellipse. Well, what, and I said, do it just until you reach the major axis. So I put my pencil here and I stretched it out and I'm over at this point. So my string goes from this focal point to this edge where my pencil is, and then from this point back to this focus. So from here to here, you can call that D1. And from here to here, you can call that D2. Well, how long is that? Well, if we take this part from here to here, the D2, you can see that's just the distance from a vertex to the focus. Cut that off and move it over here. And you can see that the sum of the, the length of the blue line, the length of the string, the sum of the focal radii is the total distance across the major axis of the ellipse. Well, from here to here is A, here to here is A, that must be 2A. <coughs> Using that information, we can solve um, a couple of problems. For instance, we are told in this problem that the focal points are at 2, 0, and 2, 6, and the sum of the focal radii is 8. What is the equation of the ellipse? By the way, you do see the stars on there, right? Good patriotic cup. I'm sure you expect nothing less from me. <coughs> so. If the focal points are here and here, and we graph those, here's two zero, here's two six, and I told you that focal points are always, always, always on the major axis. So that tells me already that my um, ellipse is going to be oriented vertically. And the center has to be halfway between the two focal points. So the center is two, three. So I already know it's gonna be x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals one. And now I can make this x minus h, x minus two, and y minus k, y minus three. So all that's left is to find this seven and 16. Well, let's see. Ah, the uh, sum of the focal radii, so the distance from this vertex to this vertex is eight. That tells me that A is four. The distance from the center to the long vertex is four, which makes A squared 16. Here's the 16. I know that the distance from the center to a focal point is three. And I also know that A squared minus B squared equals C squared. So B squared must be seven. This is the equation of the ellipse that meets these two requirements. Feel free to pause, go back and watch that until you understand where all those numbers came from. I needed to know to solve this, I needed to know the location of the focal points, I needed to know the sum of the focal radii, I needed to know that um, the focal points are always on the major axis, so I knew that the big number should go under the y, and <clears throat> And I needed to know that there was one other thing I needed to know. Oh, 
needed to know that the focal points are equidistant from the center so that the center is just the midpoint of that segment. Knowing all those things allowed me to solve that problem. Now comes my favorite type of problem. A lot of students don't like factoring. I think factoring is one of the most fun parts of algebra. I just love to see how you can take an equation, take it apart, and put it back together a different way. Oddly enough, I hate puzzles. So, um, I can't, again, can't tell what my picture is uh, cutting off in the upper right hand corner of this video, so I have to leave it here. <coughs> so, here's the equation we're given, and we're asked. What type of graph is this? You can't just look at it and go, ooh, 9 times 4 is 36. It's positive, so it's got to be an ellipse. Well, it could be an ellipse. Or it could be a degenerate ellipse. Remember when, those, uh, when the um, plane passing through the cone hits the point of the cone? You don't have an ellipse anymore. You have a point that's a degenerate ellipse. And what happens if you have... Um, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals a negative number. Well, there are no real numbers that are going to satisfy that, so you'd have no graph, no solution. So the only thing that you can tell from that a times c is positive is that your graph is going to be one of these three. So now let's get to the algebra. I'm going to move this 4 to the other side, So, and then I'm going to group the x squared and the x together. And I'm going to group the y squared and the y together. Now I'm going to factor out a um, 9 here so that I can get an x squared plus something x. In this case, x squared plus 4x. This makes it easy to complete the square. Remember, to complete the square, you just take half of the 4 and square it. So I'm going to add 4 in here. But I'm not really adding 4 to the left side of the equal sign. I'm adding 9 times 4. So if I add 36 to the left, I have to add 36 to the right side of the equal sign. Similarly, I have 4y squared minus 8y. I need to factor out a 4. Now I have a 1y squared. It's easy to complete the square. Take half of the negative 2 and square that. You get positive 1. But again, on the left side of the equal sign, I'm not adding 1. I'm adding 4 times 1. So I have to add 4 times 1 over here as well. Um, take this. Uh, I've it's called completing the square. So let's write it as a perfect square. This is completing the square. So let's write it as a perfect square. Now I'm going to divide everything by 36. And you see that I come up with this equation. This is an ellipse. We can tell it's an ellipse. If it were equal to zero, it would be a point. If it were equal to a negative number, it would be um, no graph at all, no solution. So what's the center of this ellipse? It's x minus h, y minus k. So the center is negative 2, 1. The vertices are three points above and below this point. So it's going to be negative 2, 4, and negative 2, negative 2. Then you have what's called the minor vertices. These are the major vertices. Now you've got the minor vertices. They're going to be two units, because this is b squared. b is 2. Going to be two units to the left and to the right of that. So two units to the left is this point. Two units to the right is this point. Where are the focal points for this graph? <clears throat> well, a squared minus b squared is c squared. So the focal length is square root of 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. And you take the square root of that to get c. So c is root 5. So the focal points have to be root 5 above this, which gives me this point, and root 5 below this which gives me this point. Do I expect that you would be able to solve problems like this with factoring? Absolutely. It is exceedingly important. Recall that this is a pre-calculus course 
And most students who do not do well in calculus, their problem is not the calculus, their problem is the algebra. So we really need to get good at manipulating the algebra in problems like this. The good news is, after those two examples, uh, that's the end of the lesson. Uh, let me find something here. That's what I'm looking for. That's the end of today's lesson. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Other than that, have a great day.